All right, let's get started. Call the meeting to order is, oh, there's Katie. Okay, gotcha. All right, is there any public comment for items not on the agenda? Addition or changes to the agenda? Denise, I had one thing I wanted to say. Yes, ma'am. It's Rose. Um, as many of you saw, David Delcor wrote a little piece on me in Talk of the Town, and I'm sorry to see that he's not signed on. So anyway, this really is for David Delcor, but just wanted to tell him I wasn't too happy, and he spelled my name wrong. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's that. All right, are there additions or changes to the agenda? Um, is Jay, is Jay on? Not yet. I don't see him. Um, he was supposed to be first up to talk to us about the um, Truman Health Order. I know sometimes he has a hard time connecting if he's trying to connect from his phone. Let me give him, let me call his house real quick. Other than that, how is everybody? Doing good. Good. Hi. Pat? Who's Pat? Do we have a last name on Pat? Uh, no. Is that a, Cliff, is that a phone or an internet connection they're trying to do? It's internet. I'll see if I can get their full name. I wonder if that is somehow Jay incognito. Um, let's see, I'm trying Jay's cell phone because he didn't answer his own phone. If whoever is Pat can hear us, can you tell us who, give us your last name or I if just, you're somebody or, else? Or respond via chat. I just sent Pat a chat. I can do a prompt as well. Hi, Pat. Can you hear? Say what? Pat is having audio issues. It sounds like. Having audio issues sounds like. Don't have a camera. Hello. Hey, Jay. Hello, this, hey, Jay. This is Denise. Um, the select board's waiting for you to zoom in, so we can do the. Um, review of your final inspection report. All right, thanks. Huh, all right, so Pat is audio problems? Sounds like. So Pat isn't anything to do with Jay trying to sign on then? No. Okay, don't you just love <laughs> the technology? Hi, Bob. Well, hello. How are you? I'm doing fine for a month. <laughs> well, that's good. Glad to hear it. I haven't fallen down yet this year skiing. Oh, is that a normal event that you like to do is to fall down? No, no. I'm heading for my ninth time up at the mountain. Oh. I can make it through the whole year without falling. That would be good. <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not sure what happened to Jay and... Um, we're waiting for Sharon to come back on so we can get the rest of the agenda going. I'm just trying to see if there's, there's really nothing we can do while we're waiting. So, sorry. Thank you for your patience. Hi, babe. They can't hear me, I guess. I don't know. Sharon's coming on board. Okay. Hey, Sharon. 
She has an audio delay. It should be connected shortly. Now she has audio. Hi, Sharon. Oh, hey, Sharon. Um, Jay never arrived for the meeting. Maybe he's having technical difficulties or is out on a call or something. So we're going to get started on the rest of the agenda. Um, I don't see Toby, so I assume there's no operations manager update. And up next is um, the road commissioner. And on December, I think it was December 28th, we started the process to review a curb cut application for um, Charlotte Hannah Bassage and Scott Bassage. And we had some questions and Alfred was going to meet with the contractor and the applicants and get back to us with some information on um, some follow-up information. You had some ideas, Alfred, that you wanted to explore with, I guess, I forget who the contractor was. Was it Willie Sayers, maybe? Willie Sayers, yes. Okay. So did you have a chance to um, meet on site and get your questions answered? Yes. Yes. I met with him last week, I believe it was and went over my concerns and my requirements and he was totally acceptable to that. Okay. So the requirements are a culvert where the driveway meets the road, 15 inch culvert. Okay, wait a second, I'm writing this down. 15 inch culvert where the driveway meets the road. Yep. Isn't that how it usually is? Well, yes, but not every curb cut requires a culvert. True, okay. So I would like to someday think that we should require every every curb cut to have a culvert, but we're not there yet. Right, okay, so 15 inch culvert where the driveway meets the road. Yeah, and then there, there there's a, another required culvert that is out of our right of way. Uh, in order to cross a brook with their driveway. So I want them to stone line. Wait a second, another required culvert that's not in the right of way? Right. It's not my requirement. It's, there's a brook that crosses where they want to put the driveway. So they have to install that culvert regardless. Okay, what size culvert is that? Uh, that I don't know. That's for them to determine. Oh, okay. Because it's out of our right of way and we don't have jurisdiction there. So I'm assuming they'll probably put an 18 inch culvert, but it's not, that's not part of the curb cut. I'm just referencing okay. that. I'm just referencing that culvert because water is going to come out of that culvert and come down to the road and into one of, one of our culverts, a, a, a cross culvert. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking them to stone line it between those two culverts. To, to prevent erosion. So stone line it between the town culvert and the property owner culvert. Yeah, or upper culvert, whichever you, however you want to describe it. Okay, anything else? Uh, no, everything else passes. The site distance is fine. Everything else is, is just fine. There is, they do have to, which every curb cut does, has to follow the A20, or A76 from the state. Yeah, the, the B, yeah. Or whatever the, the, the V-trans, the V-trans standards is what they are. Right, right. B71. Uh, B71, yeah, thought, right. Yeah, B71. Yeah. So they have to follow that same as every every curb cut and it should go without saying. Now we talked um, at the meeting on the 28th about the cost. There is no cost because, well, the cost is gonna be all on theirs. I was thinking before I talked to the con car contractor, I was thinking we would have to move our culvert, our town yeah. culvert. But with the discussion, we're not moving our culverts, so there'll be no cost to the town. Oh, okay. It's all it's all on them. All the conditions are their expense. So we won't be installing the 15-inch culvert where the driveway meets the road. That's correct. That's the okay. contractor. Yeah. 
So it would be no cost to, to install by contractor, no cost to town. And do the applicants know that after that's installed that you have to come and look at it? Uh, yes, I actually told him to let me know when he starts and I can come and have a conversation with him just to okay. freshen everything up and because he won't be doing it obviously until spring. Right. So he'll call me or I'll, I'll track him down, whatever, and we'll, we will have a discussion at that point. Okay. Does anybody on the board have any other questions, comments? No. No, I think you covered it. Thank you. Okay. So what I'm hearing and we'll make a motion to approve the Hannah Bassage curb cut. And I don't have the address right in front of me, but I'll find it and put it on the permit um, to approve a 15 inch culvert where the driveway meets the road to be installed by the contractor with no cost to the town. The road commissioner will meet the contractor on site um, to answer any further questions as needed. There is another culvert that needs to be installed that is not in the town's right of way, but it needs to be installed across the brook and the property in between the two culverts needs to be stone lined to help with erosion control. Um, and Alfred has confirmed that the site distances um, from to access the driveway are all good. And a reminder that that the applicants need to, need to meet the V Trans V seventy one standards for installing the culvert. Really long motion. Is there a second? I would be willing to second, but I'd like to propose a friendly amendment. Yes. We authorize the select board chair to sign on behalf of the select board. Oh, okay. All right, with that amendment, is there anything else? Are you ready to vote? All right, Rose. Aye. Okay, um, let me see, Sharon? Aye. Cliff? Aye. And I'm an aye, so I'll try to get that out to um, Charlotte and Scott this week. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your thank patience. You, Lisa, and thank you, Alfie. You're welcome. Thank you. Bob. You're welcome. Thank Have you a good all. evening. Bye-bye. <laughs> um, Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Alfred, did you have any updates on uh, positions? Uh, yes. I, I got you don't conference. have to get in, you don't have to get into names because we're not in executive session, but right. Well, the the part time employee that I was that I had in for a drug screen has come back negative. That's so good. He is all set, ready to go. Um, just need to talk to you, the select board, about uh, compensation. What are we paying him? Oh, okay. Um, That's something we should do in executive yeah, session. Yeah, we shouldn't do that. I mean, you don't have to stick around for executive session. We can do it at the end of the meeting and let you know. Okay. Or we could call Alfred. Yeah, or we can call you when we're ready to go into executive session if you want. Yes, that's fine. Should we call your house? Yes, I'm okay. home for the evening, yes. Okay, we'll do that. Cliff. Yeah, Alfie, just a quick question. Any significant changes from what we discussed last time around? Uh, nothing for the part-time position, no. Okay, thank you. Yeah, there has been some changes on the full-time. Okay, uh, well, we can talk about that when we go into executive session then. Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks, Alfie. You're well. So you're any, done with me? Done with and, me well, any, well, no, I just want to ask you, is there anything else you want to um make us aware of uh, that's not executive session material right uh no we are we're down to three guys right now so um you know so far we've been keeping up but we've had a couple of days of decent weather so yeah 
Um, so I, I see your ad on the front porch forum asking for forgiveness from the from the residents ahead of time, and that's good. But yeah. we're with the three of us. We're going to do the best we can. We've kind of switched up the routes again. Um, I'm taking the majority of two of them. Um, just to keep at least the bus routes passable yeah. for the next couple of days until we can get our part-time to start. Okay. Sounds Which, good. We appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Other than that, everything seems to be working fine. Craig, you had a comment? Just want to say thanks, LV. As always, um, things have seemed really smooth, but uh, I guess there's been no freezing rain. So uh, regardless, I'm impressed by the, the plowing and sanding and how many times you're going by my house. So um, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Craig. We always appreciate positive feedback. <clears throat> All right, Alfred, I'll give you a call when we're ready to go in executive session. Okay, sounds good. All right, thank okay. you. Yeah, you bet. Um, is Judy on? No. I don't see Judy, okay. So, um, in light of COVID and the changes to town meeting and everything, um, we need to vote to approve that all, that ballots be mailed to all the registered voters. And that's per, um, I think it's Act 162 as part of that legislation. And it was just recently updated to allow towns to vote to mail ballots to all of the registered voters. And Judy's been working with the other town clerks and the school district. And I guess all of the towns are in sync except for the town of Berlin. They're going to do theirs a little differently, but apparently they can, they can do that. So I would entertain a motion or maybe I'll make a motion that we approve the mailing of all ballots for town meeting 20 March, what is it, March 3rd or March 2nd, 2021 to all the registered voters in town. And as an aside to that, the funding or the payment to do that is gonna be funded through COVID money that the legislature has received through the Secretary of State's office. Thank you for clarifying that, Denise, I'll second. Okay, is there any further discussion or questions? All right, are you ready to vote, select board? Rose? Aye. I'm an aye. Cliff? Aye. And Sharon? Aye. Great, excellent. Um, thank you, Craig and Carolyn, for being patient and presenting the Kellogg Hubbard update to the board. I really appreciate your patience as we were working on multiple different things to try to get the budget done. And thank you for not increasing the amount. Of course, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for already having approved us to be on the warning. That's, um, yeah, we're really appreciative of that. And um, yeah, so um, where do I start? Okay, so. Uh, weird year, obviously, <laughs> and understatement of the century. Uh, so throughout the pandemic, uh, the library has been, um, you know, forcibly closed down for a, for a great portion of the year. We were able to open up for some in-person services uh, over the summer. Otherwise, we have been open for curbside service and we have been loaning out curbside service books and materials and interlibrary loan books from other libraries. Um, you, we've loaned out thousands and thousands and thousands of them at this point. It's been a, we've been doing a pretty hop in business still, which is really wow, great. Good. Yeah, um, right, you know, out of our lobby. So people come in and they, um, either the side lobby or the front lobby, depending on their ability, because the side lobby is ADA accessible. Uh, and so people pick up books on site or they pick them up from outside the building. We've been doing uh, deliveries in all of our member towns. So at least once a week, our outreach librarian goes out to our member towns and people that have reserved uh, reserve materials and but they say, oh, well, I can't make it all the way into Montpelier. We arrange drop off and pick up. 
Uh, and so that's been that's been hopping right along, and that kind of that took the place of the services that we did offer for outreach in daycares, all of our, our daycare story times and, and preschool story times in, in the preschools out in our communities, those were all suspended as of last spring. So we have um, put this, this town delivery service in place uh, for the duration to make up for that. Uh, the, I'm just checking my notes. Um, so at this point, since about Thanksgiving, we've been back to this curbside service only model um, where previously we were letting people in to use the public bathrooms and public computers. Uh, and then we're hopeful, you know, I, 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 echo, I echo the governor a little bit in that we don't wanna set, um, we don't wanna set benchmarks because once you set a benchmark, it becomes gospel. He, I've been watching all of his press conferences and he said that in one of the last ones. Uh, and that's and and that's true for the library as well, in a way. Uh, although at this point, I will say we're we're waiting for this multi-household ban to end, and then we're that's when we're going to talk about letting people back in um, at least part of the building. And our hope through all of this um, was not to fluctuate our services too much, to try to stay as steady as we possibly could, uh, and not yo-yo because the danger in that is then people don't know what to expect ever and they don't know how to approach the library. They don't know what services they can access. So we've tried to kind of pick these, um, it, it kind of pick a level of service and hold it. Uh, and so our hope is that when we can start opening back up to having people in the building again, and that at that point, we'll see thing with vaccinations and with, um, you know, warmer weather coming someday that we'll be able to to remain at that level and then consistently build up towards being more, uh, more and more open, and we won't have to open and close and open and close. Uh, so, yeah, Carolyn, where, 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 where in Callis are there sites for the books? Is there's Maple Corner, Adamant? There's yep, Maple Corner and Adamant. Yep, at the co-op. Okay. Yep. Uh, actually, if I can share, I think I can share screen. Oh, no, I can't. That's okay. Um, if you want to find those sites, uh, if you go to the Kellogg Hubbard Library website. Yeah, um, screen share now, Carolyn. Oh, cool. I'll show it to you then. Uh, so on our, so here's our website. Uh, so if you go over to outreach in the menu, mm -hmm. uh, you can see uh, community curbside delivery schedule. So there, so you can see our sites there uh, and the dates and times when our outreach librarian is there. And so what you do, you when you call up to place a hold, or if you, um, or if you place a hold online, you just uh, you just email us. You, you email us or call us and say, oh, I'd actually like to pick up my books at Maple Corner. And then we say, okay, we're going to be out there next on such and such a date and time. And then uh, we leave them on the on the bookshelf at the back of like at the back of the co-op or there's a bookshelf in front of Maple Corner in front of the store. Okay. Uh, and we've had a few people, we've, we've had a, a significant number of people take us up on that as well, actually. And Maple Corner and um, uh, and the co-op are, are I think they're, those are actually our most popular. I'm thinking back, cause I've, I've, I've been the one to do some of this uh, when our outreach librarian has been out. And those are our most popular spots, which is really nice. So there's no site in East Callis? There isn't. If there's a good spot for one, I would be perfectly willing to add it though. Okay, I might talk to you separately. Yeah, about just let me know. That. Yeah, yep. I'll, I'll send you a separate email. Good, yeah, that sounds good. Mm. Um, the other thing that has been uh, very popular this year or it has been the, the, the strongest emerging trend as libraries have had to modify their services are digital services. Uh, and so we already had eBooks and audiobooks, and that's here with the Libby app and all of our pages with, uh, with services from signing up for a library card to uh, requesting interlibrary loan items. Uh, everything has instructions. So you're going to see general information about the service. So in this case, uh, the Libby app. And then there, is, there are written instructions. And then there is a video that our head circulation librarian, Steve, has made to walk you through the steps to sign up for things. So even if you can't come in, um, if you are trying to access something at a time when the library isn't open and you can't actually reach a librarian by phone, you can go here and you can find on most of our pages instructions to sign up for things. Okay, sounds so, good. 
Yeah, yeah, no, we're really pleased. We've we've moved a lot of stuff onto our website. So I'm, I'm glad that I get the opportunity to share it with you guys um, because there's just so much stuff that you can access this way. Uh, so anyway, so, so this year we added Flipster, which is a, a digital magazine service. So you can download uh, copies of magazines and flip through them in an ebook format. And again, there's instructions in a video. Uh, and then we added the service called Canopy, which we have gotten requests for for years and uh, hesitated. We actually, we hesitated for a long time to add a lot of digital services just because we understand and appreciate that not everybody has access to high-speed internet. And when you're talking about adding a digital service, there's not the same kind of guarantee that people will be able to access it equally. Um, so, but we've, but this year that kind of forced that issue. And so we have now digital eBooks, we have audiobooks, we have magazines and we have um, uh, streaming movies. And the same thing, there's instructions and then there's, there's video instructions as well. Isn't it amazing the things that people have done in response to COVID being creative with all different kinds of things. It blows my mind. It's just so impressive how everybody has stepped up to try to do things for people to make like the library accessible. So we've tried to. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. And um, so you can also look at adult under adult programs. We have all of our upcoming programs on our website. We also, if you scroll down, you can watch videos of past programs. So those are accessible after the fact. Our children's programs are, are more associated with copyright issues. So there's a limited window of time where we can have them available to people. So those you're gonna find on our Facebook page where we record them on Facebook Live and they're only, only there for a limited amount of time. Do the, um, but, do the, do the schools take advantage of that site? Yes, they do. And one of the one of the really cool things, actually, I probably probably don't need to share anymore. I'll stop sharing for now. Um, one of the really cool things that's happened this year with COVID, uh, our children's librarians have done introductions to library services and have talked <laughs> to classrooms in this format. So we've had a, a whole classroom with a with a video on them, so you can see all the kids sitting at their at their desks, spaced apart, and. Uh, and either Nicole or Melissa, our two children's librarians, talk about the library and the things you can do, and they screen share, and 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 they've been so we've still been able to get into classrooms, which is really really cool. That's um, really fun. Yeah, no, it is. It's it's really fun. The first day, the first day, I, I walked upstairs in the children's library, and I'm like, Nicole, what are you doing? And she and she <laughs> and she tells me, and I'm like, that's amazing. So all of our librarians have found these. Um, have worked really hard to find creative ways to keep getting library services to people throughout. That's great. So, well, I, and I just I just want to chime in quickly too. The obvious comment here is hardworking librarians. Um, yes. A lot of challenges, and um, I'm I'm so impressed uh, with Carolyn, you and Jesse as co-directors, and all the librarians. The staff has been really flexible, oftentimes working from home working in the library. I picked up a book last week one day and I could not believe how many books are on the tables in the foyer to be picked up. It's it's so great. Um, and Canopy, some of this digital stuff was was coming soon, probably. We had talked about it at the board, <laughs> um, but Corona just propelled the library into a lot of the digital stuff. Um, you, you know, Fundraising this year has been challenging, but we're doing pretty well, honestly. Yep. Um, we have a new development director who uh, just started last week, Rachel Seneschal, who was uh, used to spend half her time doing programming and half doing fund development, retired at the end of the year. So we have a new person in that role, just starting to learn the ropes. Um, three board members turned off the board. We have term limits three three-year terms and so um, we had three just finish up and two new members were just voted on to the board uh, last week um, Excellent. young woman who 30 30 year old who also lives in Berlin and we have another Berlin rep uh, she's had a lot of experience even though she's only 30 with fund development um, and nonprofits so 
we're all we're all excited. Um, all our board meetings are on Zoom, of course. Um, uh, but we've been able to really so many services. It's been great. So, you know, th kudos and thanks to the whole staff. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm, people have been so creative. I applaud you for all your efforts and outreach. And I think actually COVID may have been good to get people back to reading books. That's, yeah, I, I would absolutely agree with that. And then, so I don't want to take up too much of your time because I know how busy your, all of your meetings are, but I, I did want to say I, um, on the, the theme of budget uh, for fiscal year 21, when we were originally planning this year and we had no idea what fundraising would look like or if we would see budget shortfalls or um, what, what town funding situations would look like, uh, we did reduce our budget by 5%. Uh, and we have saved on that budget, or we've, we've saved on our expenses. We have a, a, um, a position that has gone unfilled over the summer that we've been able to leave unfilled. Uh, we did not have to furlough any staff, which was wonderful. Uh, and we have been really careful with our spending, which we always are, but this just reemphasized the fact that we needed to be really careful with our spending. Um, we did have a really successful online gala in December that went really well. And so our financial picture is pretty good. We're in, we're in really solid shape right now. Um, and as you know, we're requesting level funding or we have, we've been we're requesting level funding for all of our towns. Um, and then I just want to say that also that if you guys have any questions or uh, you know, always reach out to me. I love answering questions. And the other thing I really like is to hear where we have service gaps. So like uh, East Callis, having a drop off in East Callis. But if there are other things like that or other services we could be doing, or if you, I, I'm always open to new ideas. Uh, and I love to crowdsource from all of our communities. So if there's anything else that we should be doing and we're not doing, uh, or if you're not sure if we're doing, please reach out and ask. All right, well, thank you again. Anybody else on the board have a comment or a question? I just want to say thank you for your efforts and uh, it's obviously been challenging times for all of us, but I'm glad to see that these services are still being made available to the community. Um, so kudos, job well thank done. You. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I just want to I thank just, Yeah, I would just like to reiterate what Cliff just said. Um, and, you know, just listening to your presentation really, really just hit hammer homes the point that the Kellogg Hubbard Library um, fills such a vital, um, important thing in our um, community and so many people are benefited by it. So again, thank you for all your hard work. I appreciate that. And I'll, and I'll share your comments with my staff. They'll love to hear them too. And thank you, Craig, for your service on the board. Glad to do it. That's what I was gonna say. Thank you, Craig, for being a liaison from Callis. And, and of course, you can always touch base with me too. That's really uh, one of the biggest roles that, that the town reps play, um, all the board members. Um, so yeah, please give me a shout if you have any questions or uh, things come up, ideas, really. Uh, we say this every year, but um, we know there's a void in East Callis. Um, the store is not um, quite open yet, uh, maybe in the next couple of weeks, Denise? Uh, yeah, the store probably won't, the store probably won't be open, but I'm thinking we might be able to come up with a way for there to be a delivery and pickup date on the steps of the store, but I'll, I'll talk to you and Carolyn. Yeah, I, I wondered about the post office too. Yeah, there's the post office. So there, I think we can probably find a place in East Cal's. I think it would be really good for there to be a place in East Cal's. Yeah, there would be. Yeah, absolutely. So, and Craig and Carolyn, Callis is doing its public informational meeting for town meeting on Saturday, February 20th at 1 p.m. on Zoom. Okay. Just in, if you want. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning to attend that and, you know, happy to take questions. I'm not sure exactly what the format will be for that, but I'm happy to um, to answer questions if they come up. Yeah, I mean, obviously we can't vote. We can't do town meeting right. votes and things like that on Zoom, but we'll go through, you know, the warning as we usually do. 
and see if people have questions on any of the um, warned items. Yep. Is that something I could go to as well? Sure. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. If do you is there anything else from the library? Yeah, Cliff? he's Cliff? got his hand up. You're on. Okay. There, my mute finally uh, cleared. I don't know, Carolyn, Craig, if you saw the article from CNN a couple of days ago that mentioned Yes. That. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. We, what was we, it? Uh, so it's an article about Senator Leahy and his connection to the library oh. uh, and, and his role in, yeah, there you go. He, so he, so Senator Leahy has been in five Batman movies and he's written oh, yes. an introduction for a Batman book and he's done voiceover work for the cartoon. Uh, and all of his residuals go directly to the library. So since, Sweet. yeah, so since in the past 13 years, we've gotten uh, a little over $150,000 in direct donations because nice. of his appearances in Batman films. Yeah, it's just it's just this really cool connection. Yeah. And we got a call uh, the end of last week from this reporter at CNN. And then uh, the, over the weekend, it was on their on their website. So my name's in C on CNN. <laughs> Oh my! Right, I, know. <laughs> I had to point it out to my kids. I'm like, kids, look, it's your look. mom. Yeah, there you go. So you gotta yeah. take it where you can get it. <laughs> Seriously, I I have teenagers, so I don't get a lot of cred at home, and so it was, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that happens neither here nor there, but it was a great article. Yeah. Good for yeah. you. Well, yeah. thank you again. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you all. You do. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Right. All right. Yeah. Um, Cliff, we're going to need to bring up the treasurer report, please. And Sandra, yep. Sandra, I thought I there she is. Hi, Sandra. You're on mute. Maybe your dogs won't bark like mine do. I have them in their own room right now, so if they bark, we won't hear them. Oh. So we're at the where uh, this report is uh, reflects 50% of our uh, where we are at 50% of our fiscal year. And the long story short is we're doing very well. We're on target uh, with revenues. In fact, revenues are over. Um, where we would expect to be at this point in time in both highway and um, general government. Expenses in both those departments are a titch over 50%, mostly due to the fact that we have several one-time annual payments, including of course the social agency appropriations on the general government side that are made before we hit the midpoint of our fiscal year. So it does skew the uh, expenses a bit. I don't see anything that is alarming. There are a couple of line items that are going over, but nothing that is going to make um, any significant uh, impact on the overall budget by the end of the year, I wouldn't think. and. Um, Taxes, it was a great tax collection effort this year. Surprisingly, uh, we uh, collected $20,000 more this year than we did last year, which is an interesting phenomenon, I think. Uh, we're currently collecting delinquent taxes. They're coming in fairly well. And again, I, I expect to collect them uh, by the end of the fiscal year or have them mostly collected by the end of the fiscal year. Nice. 2019 taxes are all but collected. There's $365 left to collect. Uh, and 2019 taxes, and it, I was thinking that the one taxpayer that that amount belongs to, or the vast portion of that amount belongs to, uh, I was thinking he was gonna ask for an abatement but he contacted me today and he's going to pay it in full. So 2019 are done, <coughs> all but, and we'll work on 2020 taxes as we have in the past three years. 
with monthly billing and agreements and um, support from, from myself to get the taxes paid. And that's where we are. We're in great shape. Excellent. Good for you. Are there any significant items in the budget over overage that you want to point out to the board? You know, I, I don't think there's really anything significant. You have grant expenses that weren't budgeted, and but they're reimbursed. So you're going to see in some of your expense lines where, over, you know, where things are already at 100%, but uh, in large part, that's because they were unbudgeted expenses, and we're going to see uh, an equal amount or more in some cases on the revenue side to uh, pick pick up those those line items. So I think I think we're okay. All right. Um, board members, do you have any comments, questions? Um, I, I mean, I think we're in good shape. Thank you so much, Sandra, for all your hard work. All right. Are we good? I looked through it earlier, Sandra, after you sent it out. Thank you, as always, for uh, being so thorough and putting this together. It gives us a really good picture. And um, well done, thank you. Yep, yep, I read it as soon as you sent it out. So we're good. All Ditto. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good night, everyone. All right, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, up next is just some update kind of stuff. We need to have um, a B, OA meeting, we have um, a request from Leighton, Leighton Wass for an abatement of their taxes, a portion, well, not their taxes, the penalty and interest. Then we have the small amounts, which we do every year that Sandra presents to us, and you know, things that are under a dollar to abate. And there is an issue, and I'm still trying to get to the bottom of, of this, who files the request, but North Calais Memorial Hall Association, there was something weird that went on with the tax program and they ended up getting a tax bill that they're not supposed to get. And the listers have been working with the tax department to try to get the matter resolved. Um, and if you remember, there's legislation that exempted them from property taxes. So that matter is still a little bit in the air, but just so you know that that might be part of this process. And then we need to have um, a BCA meeting to go over some things um, that Judy raised with regard to, there's a, some different things she needs to run by the um, BCA for town meeting. So I wanted to canvas the board and see if you all are available at six o'clock on Monday, February 1st to do both meetings. Can you, I know Rose, you probably don't know yet, right? Um, let me just go look at the schedule that's in the kitchen. I'll be okay, right back. Thank you. I thought we already agreed on that last week. I don't know. Not a, I don't, I don't remember that, but. Cliff, are you available? I am. And Sharon, are you available? Just, I think so, because I think I checked last time. Okay. Y yes. Okay. This is just for an hour? Yeah. And then we'll be doing our regular um, personnel meeting that night, unless folks want a night off. Um, I am, I am available at six o'clock. Um, I'm working the early shift that day, so um, right, I should perfect. be home by five. Yep. Great. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, next up, Central Mont Solid Waste Management District. I think I forwarded to you, or John did, where things are at with um, the issue that he's had been updating us on with regards to and solid waste management district and the recycled glass and so on and so forth. I believe that there was a couple of documents he sent around or a couple of emails. Um, 
town hall. Lights are still off, huh, Cliff? The lights are off, but we can turn them on anytime. <laughs> <laughs> so I do don't we want have anybody the... to get the wrong idea with that right. statement? So do we have um so Andy Felice is back being monitoring and yes, checking on Scott, things at the hall. Scott and I met with Andy and showed him the ropes. Um we also, even though we do have storm windows, we made the decision that we should protect them from uh, snow piling up against them, creating too much pressure and breaking the storm windows. So there will be, some, but it won't be the full sheets that covered the windows in years past. They'll just be uh, at the lower level to protect those portions where the snow banks may rise up to. Andy will also make sure that the, um, the two doors on the park, main parking lot side of the building are accessible for whenever we need them, that they're opening and closing, functioning, and that there's a clear path to it, as well as to the uh, tank for the uh, fuel. Um, and yeah, was, yeah, okay, I was gonna ask you, I think there's, there's more, right? Yes, we are, um, working on getting the second phone line activated. I believe we have a, a date later this week where a technician from Consolidated will come by and uh, get the lines turned on so that we can uh, take care of the issue with the redundancy for the fire alarm system. Um, we also have had some concerns raised um, by a couple of different members in the community regarding the quality of the water at the building. And I just want to put it on the select board's radar that uh, we're going to be looking into uh, what it would cost to get a filtration system installed, much like the one we had to install at the town office. Uh, not doing this could end up being way more expensive proposition for us because it would cause extra corrosion on the pipes, could even impact the, the radiant heat for heating system that we have there. So it's something that uh, we'll have to take a good look at, and make sure we get it addressed properly. Um, there is currently, we've got the um, heating system working in the two zones. There's the two zones that it works on is the wooden floor. And then the second zone is any of the parts of the building that has cement flooring with tiling on top. That would be the kitchen and the bathrooms and um, the rear area. So we're making sure that we have a proper temperature in there. We don't have to necessarily have it up at 68 degrees, uh, but we think probably a little bit warmer than 50 degrees is what we'll have to maintain it at, make sure all those systems are protected and not uh, suffering ill effects as a result of the colder weather. Any questions? Um... So when, when when do we think the, when do we think the second line at the town hall will be working for Seacoast? I believe the line is supposed to be turned on this week. For some reason, I don't have it. I can't find the email, but I believe it was the 28th that Judy said the technician was coming out. Oh, that might be right. Okay, good. And then mm -hmm. once that happens, then we have to contact Seacoast and. Uh, we can certainly get the line plugged into the system, but I believe they have to run an activation routine to verify that the line's working properly for their needs. So is Andy going to go into the building periodically just to check things out, make sure yes. things are he all will, good? He will go inside the building, uh, upstairs and downstairs, making okay. sure that all the doors and windows are, are safe, that there's no seepage into the building, that there's no leaks. Um, periodically, he will flush the toilets to make sure the septic has some activity and yeah. um, advise us accordingly should there be any issues we need to act upon. That's good. That's great. And in addition to that, he will also just make a point of driving by on a regular basis um, to, you know, just do a visual quick check from the road if anything yeah. seems to be amiss. Very good. All right, um, do you have an update for us on Friends of the Town Hall? Anything going on there? Mm -hmm. Friends of the Town Hall have um, commenced meeting again on a regular basis for the time being. We'll be meeting once a month, but uh, the first order of business is going to be 
um, looking at the proposed management agreement, taking the inputs from the meeting, uh, I believe it was October 26, where we got um, inputs from the select board as to what else they would like to see in that agreement. And um, at some point, the friends group will come to the select board, ask to be put onto the agenda and make a presentation. Any questions on that? Hearing none. Denise, are you still with us? No, oh, looks like we might have lost Denise. Could be an internet issue. Sharon, you want to take the reins? Sorry, I... hey, she's coming back. Did you do IT update? Uh, yeah, I can do IT update. There's not a lot to um, update there. Um, I can maybe speak about this in the IT portion of the meeting. We had talked about what we would need to do with regards to our IT capacity uh, for organizing the uh, informational meeting for the town meeting. Um, after getting the board's idea of how they envision that going down, what I would recommend is that we expand our existing Zoom license. Uh, right now, it's capable of doing meetings. I would like to conduct the informational meeting in the format of what they call a webinar. Um, this would allow up to 500 people to participate in oh. the uh, meeting. It would allow the board and whoever else we want to invite, say Gus, for instance, or perhaps Craig, when he wants to speak about the, the library, to serve as panelists, which um, is a little different than the meeting format that we're all used to here. It would also give us the capacity, if we're interested in doing it, to live stream the meeting to YouTube while we're conducting it. Would that be, would that be different than just recording it? Yes, yes. It would be another venue for people to be able to use it. We view it, we may not want to take advantage of that, but it is one of the options that's provided to us with the webinar package from Zoom. Does that require a different, does that require a lot more internet usage as far as capacity? No, um, it would, it would be a function of everybody's individual internet as to how how they uh, how well they could participate or view the meeting, but it gives the select board and the moderator the ability to better drive the meeting. Instead of having a single host and one co-host, we would be able to have multiple co-hosts, so we could have someone responsible for bringing people in from the waiting room, making sure that they've identified who they are by their full name as they join the meeting, so we have the record of that. It would allow uh, some other co-hosts to act as um, traffic controllers to acknowledge when people are asking questions so it doesn't all fall upon Gus to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it would just give us a, a bigger overall capacity for managing this whole process. So Cliff, the, we, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Cliff, the YouTube, YouTube, um, I'm not familiar with YouTube as an interactive format. That would be a, a contemporaneous viewing format, but not something people would be able to participate in, right? That's correct. It would just be like they were watching TV. And they, okay, so that, and that, that for whatever reason may be fine with people and it would reduce the, the, the pressure on the Zoom, the Zoomiverse, right? Exactly. Okay, okay. Um, and then on the point you just you just made around um, multiple co-hosts admitting people and getting names, I think we can also, um, as hosts, actually, uh, you uh, well you guys can't see, um, 
but you can, you know, you can rename yourself here. And I think as co-hosts, we can put people's names in their boxes. Yes. That's correct. That's okay. correct. And so, also, um, it would give us a um, Q and A format in addition to people, you know, raising their hands to ask questions. There would be a repository where general questions could go in. And if other people have the same question, they can click like, and we see what questions more people are interested in having answered. So when we do a practice, first of all, we need to figure out when we're going to do a practice. Zoom. Oh, that's that's the other thing of the webinar. It does allow for multiple practice sessions. Okay, so we, we can... need to get that scheduled here pretty quick. And will we, be, will we be able to practice with this YouTube feature at yes. the same time? Yes, we would be able to do all of this. Um, let me check something here real quick. I mean, I think whatever we can do to make it more accessible, you know, would be the best thing to do. Yeah, I want to pull something up on screen so you can all see what I'm looking at. This is the impact price-wise. Um, they offer annually, but you can buy individual months. I would propose we buy uh, two months worth because we're going from the threshold from February into March to have the actual uh, meetings. And if we needed to have a follow-up or something for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So our, our minimal cost would be an additional $140. My proposal for two months would put us at 280. Yeah, that seems, yeah, that makes sense to me. Does that make sense to you, Rose and Sharon? It does. Um, Cliff, can we, I, I'd be happy to work with you on this, but I think that, you know, you and I who are, have used Zoom a lot maybe could put our heads together on exactly at the really, at the really micro level, like how many people doing what, who's going to do what. Exactly. Um, I mean, it, before we before the training so that everybody knows when we walk in the training what their job is and yeah and what I'd like to be able to do is put together a short um, instructional um, piece that we could send out to the community so for hey for those of you who aren't familiar with zoom here's how you use it um, mm -hmm. if you're we can even provide instructions to people who might be joining only by phone because there is the capacity for them to mute and unmute themselves while they're on the phone, as well as raise a hand and be acknowledged so they can ask a question. Well, yeah, but yeah, a, we, will, like we will automatically mute everybody, right? And that's then they'll correct. have to they'll have to know how to unmute themselves. Well, in this case, we'll you know, them. they can raise their hand. Once they're acknowledged, we unmute them or a co-host unmutes them and they can ask their question. Yeah, I think yeah. that's right. And I think that you said so that Craig, I think Craig's only job should be Library. dealing with what's right in front of him. N not Craig, Gus. Gus. Gus's that's only right. job should be dealing with what's right in front of him, not having to do anything around the, the logistics and the how you know, logistics. Absolutely agreed. He'll have his handfuls just yeah. like that. Um, Sounds like a good the, plan. The other nice feature about the webinar uh, extension is that if we have the desire at any point during the meeting to invite someone to step up as a panelist to make a presentation, we can do that. And then we can return them to the audience after they're done. And it would allow us to run up to I believe it's 100 panelists concurrently. I don't imagine that we'll need that many, but the capacity is there. Well, that's great. Thank you for doing all this research on that, Cliff. It's been very, very helpful. Thank you for stepping up to do that. So well, we should, so. You're welcome. We should talk to the office staff um, and coordinate with them and Gus a time to do a practice meeting and see if we can get some of our friends to just participate as guinea pigs. I would even propose 
uh, at least two practice sessions, one for our core group to participate in and make sure we've worked out any kinks that we can imagine. And then a second larger one where we invite uh, friends and neighbors to help us work out kinks at large. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, sounds like a good plan. Uh, and even maybe in our friends and neighbors, inviting somebody who doesn't use Zoom, so exactly. that we have, so we have somebody, the somebody whose lens is really fresh, to remind us of what we don't know. Preferably, or what, what we what we know that we don't even think of telling people. Yep. Someone like Greg. Greg, I was thinking Doug, who would probably not even be willing, but yeah. Greg could be yeah, good. Greg's never, he's never done a Zoom. Oh, so he'd be my, good. My dad, he doesn't live in Calais, so he can't like spread the word. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could have, and my husband, who's never, who's like Greg. Never done a Zoom meeting? Nope, nope. He's, he's watched me do a Zoom meeting. <laughs> All right, so we'll figure out a date and see when everybody is available. Because um, the 20th will be here pretty quick. It's almost the end of January. I can't even believe it. Yep. Yay. Cliff, do you want some help thinking through tasks and jobs? Yeah, let me, um, you know, what we could do maybe is uh, we could start, I'll, I'll get a, a something in the Google folder. Uh, a bucket where we can start capturing these things. Um, get a get a few bullet points captured, and then we can expand upon it from there. Sounds good. Okay, and where are you going to put it in the town meeting folder? I'll put it in the town meeting folder. Um, I'll get it kicked off first. You know, think it through a bit, and then uh, put it in and send everyone an email and say, "Okay, uh, please drop your ideas here." Sounds good. And in the meantime, Sharon, if you have some ideas right off the top of your head, feel free to email them to me. Uh, All right. Very yeah, good. I agree. You know, given given your level of experience with using Zoom with your clients and my familiarity with it, we can definitely, uh, I think, cover a lot of issues before they become issues. We have two experienced Zoomers. Yay. And we have somebody who's chomping at the bit to learn to um, learn Zoom. So I'll do some one-on-one -on -one training there. All righty. Thank All right. you. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Um, hitching post. Do you, all, do you all remember last spring, summer, talking about the hitching post and putting a post up outside of the Adamac co-op? That hitching post is for people to sign up to ride share. Um, it was supposed to go into effect this spring, but um, due to COVID, all the hitching post stuff has been put on hold. So I just wanted to let you know that in case you get any inquiries and just to give you the update on that. It doesn't seem to be a good way to do ride sharing right now until the COVID situation settles down. Um, so that's... That's it on the hitching post. Um, you want to do minutes now or personnel stuff now? If we do minutes now, Katie will still be here. So I would propose that we review, we review some of the minutes. Uh, that's, that's good. I want to, um, I think they're still in the folder, but um, Katie, there were the minutes that I wanted to add in the specific statutory provision yep. um, that allows the select board to waive the petition yeah. process. Yeah, I put and that in there today, Sharon. You found it? Yeah, it's Act 162. It is Act, okay, let me, all right, let me, I didn't think it was in there, but let me, let me look at that because that actually makes sense because I have spent too much time trying to find it in the statutes. Yeah, I just put it in there today. It's Act 162. It's temporary and I put in the wording from um, what it's there for. So maybe Cliff could call up. Was, were those the next minutes up for review? 
those were the minutes of January or December. Were they the 28th or January 4th? I can't remember. The 28th. So maybe on the fifth. Call, call those up. You're on mute, Cliff. Uh, Denise, the issue we were stuck on was what authorizes us to filter and approve other petitions. And that is. I think that's in the same act. Because I'm looking at something that I got from VLCT. Um, It talks about how many square feet per person. If you want to hold it in person, um, yeah, I don't see it in X in in. Um, but I couldn't find it anywhere else. And what I but what I did find is. See, I made Kate, comments, but I don't see them, Sharon. I see them. You see them? Where? They're not lining up exactly because we have so many comments, but when I click on that, um, yeah, let's see. So, so Denise, I thank you for, but I, as I open Act 162, it's just one page. I don't think that's it. That isn't what I was reading that one night and I just cannot find it again. The provision that I'll, you're right on the signatures, but this is on other like voter petitions or citizen petitions or whatever that's called that we said we would approve them um if they don't go through the you You're know you're talking regular... about are you talking about like if somebody wanted to put something on the ballot i mean on the warning about vaccines um for yeah, we didn't, example we, yeah we didn't get any but let me see right so that's not in act 162 and i remember that i read it and i sat here and studied the language and I cannot for the life of me find it again. Um, what I, Katie did send me the VLCT guidance that's, that makes an oblique reference to we can do that, but it doesn't, again, that doesn't ground itself in the statutes either. Here, Sharon, Sharon, check this out. Um, 17 VSA, mm -hmm. section 2642A3. Hang on. Yeah, I, that's what I just read. I've been reading that all night. That's not the one you mean? <laughs> that's not the one yep. you're looking for? Nope, it's not in there. So uh, I was like, oh wait, that's, that's the one I've been reading. Um, so I think we gotta move on already. So I think we just need to write around this. The sec floor has authority. Um, VLC, we could just say VLCT materials um, so site, C-I-T-E, select board authority to blah, blah, blah. There, we have a, we have a, an authority <laughs> and there, VLCT materials site, select board authority to waive signatures. Yeah. And move is that on. The, okay. That, is that the stuff I put in today? That I think was from earlier. And that was me marking a placeholder to find the statutory reference, but we got more important things to do at this point. Yeah, well, I think if you look at the comment I made, if you just take out the Act 162 stuff, it cites that authority. But I can't, I can't Cliff, can you make any way to make them a little bigger? Yeah, your comment though, because there's so many comments and whatnot in here, yours got pushed way down. Oh. Is it a comment though, or did Denise make an edit that we actually can see? I made I made a comment, but I didn't. I put it in the comment section. Yeah, I saw it a minute ago. It was almost to the end here. Well, if we just go through and start accepting, then things will start to get. Yep. Aligned. Let me expand this. Better? A little bit better, not great. Can you make it a little bit bigger? That's better. Okay, so shall we start at, let's take it from the top. Ba -dum, ba -dum, bum, bum. Bum. 
All right. <clears throat> Some inputs here. Are these some of your edits, Sharon? Some are hers. Yeah, some are, some could are mine. be. Do you want me to multi? Do you want me to go in and accept while Cliff drives so that Cliff isn't trying to do too many things? Which works yeah. better for you, Cliff? Or Katie can accept. Yeah, yeah let Katie. Yeah, Katie can accept. So at the top. Um, I put in a comment under Denise Wheeler recused herself from the discussion and vote to avoid to avoid a percent. I think I put a comment there somewhere, but I don't know where it went. Can you can you see my comments, Katie? Yes, I just accepted it because because it said it in here. Um, I can't see the comments. I just accepted that comment because it says here to avoid perception of a conflict of interest. Can you tell where I'm highlighting it? Yep. Okay. If you want to see the comments, then I have to make this smaller. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. And then I just had a. Mm hmm. I got so, it. So, yeah, leave, leave it. I guess leave it, Cliff, so we can see the comments. Okay. I just updated that guy. Yeah, I just wanted to have the date format be the same. So. Uh -huh. um, what's this next one? It's here. Edit from Sharon. Um, so a need for the board something. Taryn sure. suggests we delete to be the one so it just reads. If there's a need for the board to host the meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's good. <clears throat> um, Denise, I had one comment at the top of page one, not sure. related to all those other things, but in light of the fact that Katie and I work so hard on the appointed position spreadsheet, under mm -hmm. the appointment for um, Dirk Van Susteren, it is a three-year term, but can you just insert expires in 2023? So Good. he's filling a, vac a vacancy. Yeah, I know you guys put in a tremendous amount of effort into getting that all up to date. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. So Katie, by extension, if... Um, if when we're doing this sort of thing, if we forget to say it, yeah, I would say go ahead and put in like a secretary's note mm -hmm. in, yep. in minutes to capture it. It's such a detail that we shouldn't have to talk about it if we forget, but you should be able to put it in and know that we're going to need it. And then it won't take more than six months for us to be glad that it's there. Yeah, yeah. good idea. Thank you. All right, so here we are. Yep, application, yep. This was a long meeting, huh, Katie? <laughs> mm. um, all right. Yep. I'm good with those comments. Yep. Yep. Actually, on the record, do we lose the comma? We need to lose. This is to first go on the land record. We need to just go. The sentence needs to say the permit's the place where things go on the land record. Okay. No, they don't. It's not where they go. It's where they get recorded. Yeah, even better, where they get recorded in the land yeah. records. Yeah, that was my it, comment. Uh, this place it is the process through which to be all the way thorough. Uh, the permit is the process through which. Um, 
things. Why, why don't okay. we just say, my comment yeah. was, the per, we just say the permit is recorded in the land records. Yeah, that's good. And never mind the process stuff. All righty. And road commissioner. Yeah. Looks good. Are we done with the road commissioner stuff? Working our way through the changes. Okay. EMFD, are we done with Woodbury? Hang on. I'm having trouble using the copy and paste. Okay. All right, on EMFB. Oh. Okay, town meeting. Um, yep, those look okay. Yeah, I think I'm glad that we we Katie, thank you for the really thorough for for giving us a lot on that so we could have, document a really thorough discussion so people I mean people no doubt will still have people being grumpy but we've got some really good um, Yeah, and has anybody evidence that we thought carefully about it. Yeah. Yeah, I've talked to a few people who asked me about about it so it, I think we had our good discussion was really helpful to, for us all to see it through and think it through so it was really good mm -hmm. okay I think my so we're just gonna strike that yeah thank you I think mm -hmm. my comment is coming up that we might incorporate in that paragraph somewhere Oh, nuts, Denise. I wonder if your comment was associated with what I just deleted. It might have been. Then I need to go back to an older version of the document to see it. And let me um, scroll down and see if it shows up. I'm worried that, that it has yeah. been tied to that highlighted section. Yeah, it's good. There's a, there's a bunch of, there's some Denise comments below, though. 
Yeah, yeah but, but they're not. That's not it. I just thought we could put in, if we don't want to put in the official act number. Um, I don't. No, Denise, don't don't misunderstand me. I think we can put the official act number in. It's just that it isn't the act. It isn't the act. Isn't what authorizes the the thing I was getting stuck on. Right, but I I didn't get to finish my sentence. Um, okay. I had put in. Okay, this is. I had typed in. Yeah. Um, uh, switch the switch to Australian ballot. And this is where it does talk about the act number, but it says this allows a te temporary authority, allows, temporarily allows a municipality to apply the Australian ballot system to any or all of its meetings, special and annual, held in the year 2021 by vote of its select board. So I think we could put that in there. All right, I'm, I'm a little lost as to exactly where it should go. Put it, put it between, put it right before Denise Wheeler made a motion. That's, okay. yes, just, that's, where, that's where I had, had it. Denise. Just stick you it in to, the, as a new paragraph right in there. I can type it up and send it to you in the chat, Katie. Awesome, thank you. Sorry, I deleted your work. DLCT, um, where did it go? Provided. Denise, what you just said a minute ago sounded like Okay, there you go. Thank you. See, I've got some typos in my note, but you can fix those. <clears throat> it sort of sounds like to annoy all of its meeting. Say what? It's just a funny typo, that's all, Denise. Oh. <laughs> Bless you, Katie. Thank you. Katie, I'll, Katie, I'll do that while you guys go down to the rest of it. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I think that there needs to be a different word there. You see that? Um, it's hard to see because it's so tiny, but um, do you see where it says, I don't think this, maybe it needs to be, um, um, okay, yeah, other than that, those look good. Okay, I got your section added back in if you want to go up and look at it. Okay, thank you. There we go. There you go. Yep, thank you. Um, did we miss? I think you got to go back up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's where. Oh, uh, 
there's one you got. I'm sorry, Sharon, you're cutting out. What did you say? There's a there's a place below where that sun showed up showed up again about plopped by that's where it landed. Never mind is found fragment. Katie when Katie accepted it, that comment got plugged in into a different spot. It was but never mind. It's it's we put it in the right spot because it to Australian ballots. Okay. So we're on Am I frozen oh. or is everybody else frozen? Okay. Um those look fine. I can hear you. Yeah, you were breaking up a little, Sharon, but we can yeah. hear you. Now we can hear you. <laughs> Sharon, I'm sorry, we... Katie. I'll stop. Are we doing I'll stop. Here? I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, too many fingers in the soup. That's okay. I can stop. All, if you're working on it, I can get out of there. No, 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 no. I thought I, I, I just saw that. And I was like, oh, I'll just get that one. But you were getting it. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Katie. All right. The next one looks okay. Um, executive session. Yep, that's fine. Yay, we made it through. Okay, thank you so much, Katie. Um, yeah. All right. Let's let's go into executive session. Unless wait a minute, we, we have. have to, wait a minute. We have to approve these minutes after we just did all this. Okay. Sorry. So I would make a motion to approve the December twenty-eight minutes as reviewed and chained or reviewed and edited. Is there a and second? Improved. New and improved. Second. Okay, let's vote. Uh, Rose? Aye. I'm an aye. Sharon? Aye. Cliff? Aye. All right, so how many more sets? Of, so we have January 4th, 11th, 18th to do. I would ask that we do the January 4th minutes. I think those are short. And then that, and then we'll just do the rest next time. Yeah. Right. Okay, stand by. It's doing some weird stuff here, giving me some error messages about access to the Google Drive. One of those. I hope we're not going to have one of those popping in and out nights. Okay, hopefully you can see those. Yeah. Okay, so I just had. I just changed that around just to tad that it was the continued meeting of. Did I write of um, December 28th? Yeah. Okay. And. <clears throat> The listers explain rather than have elucidated or whatever. Mm -hmm. Elucidated. Yeah, I think everybody can understand explained better. Mm -hmm. The listers have explained what elucidated meant. Yeah. <laughs> Try to write in words that the average person reading things can understand. It's still explained to still have the strike through through it, Katie. I yeah, I don't know where it is in Google Docs. I'm looking for it while oh, you're. Oh, it's under it's under format. Okay. You can fix it later. Okay. Yeah, just fix it later. That's fine. I trust you to do it. Hmm. Huh. Okay.
And then rather than just say, um, well, you can see what I said, just change it to our professional auditors. Um, just looking for where that, oh, I see. Hey, Denise. Okay, so I'm just, I'm sorry, you guys, I did not read these ahead of time. So the board noted it is working on the highway budget without rationale or calculations provided by the operations manager. <laughs> that makes it sound like we're ignoring what he provided. So, oh, I didn't read it like that. No, but it very easily could. You didn't because you know what, you, what it means. But any, any person, right, Katie, anybody could read it. <laughs> That Where we are you? ignored that He's first like, sentence. <laughs> the, the board noted it is working on the highway budget without rationale or calculations provided by the operations manager. Oh, I see, words, yeah. I, see, right? I see what you mean. Yeah. I see what you mean. Right, right. So, um, so it needs to say the board noted it is working on the highway budget, even though the operations manager has not provided rationale or rationale for his calculations. Okay, Period. good point. All right, I'll keep reading with a different set of eyes to see what else says yeah. not what we mean. And it just needs to say, um, you're gonna go back and take out that strikeout later. There we go. Okay. All right. The rogue commissioner is pursuing identifying a truck. Can we just say the rogue commissioner is looking for a truck to purchase that would replace? Where are you? Thank you, Katie. Okay. All right. And I just put in um, when I thought I put in when we, ex oh, I made a comment that we should put in the return to work date. Is that it? Pretty much. March 8th or yep. Katie? Oh yeah, that's remember? the date. Okay. I just wanted, I wanted to preface a little bit of how we came to, of why we decided to do what we did that night that we had well, you can see what I wrote. Yeah, and chose to grant the full. Is that what we're reading? What Katie has highlighted? Yeah. Uh, no, the select board had budgeted up to three two point three five, and chose to grant the full amount. No, it's I put it up at the beginning. That I noted that the two point three five percent wages for the office staff and road commissioner that were budgeted effective July one were put on hold. And I see. So we're so yeah. we're we are just, elucidating the fact that we held off. Um, no, 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 Katie. That that part stays. They they make different points. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One is why we. One is that we we put them on hold way back when, and we're going ahead with the motion. And the other one is. 
teaching right. everybody that the budget is one thing and what we authorize as a pay increase is something different. Okay, yep. Yep. Do we need to state the purpose or reason they were put on hold? You know, I started to put that in there and then took it back out. We can put it in. I guess it's public knowledge that we're, because of the union negotiations. I did, like I said, I did put that in there and then I took it out. I could, I could I, go away. Yeah, me too. It's a pleasure. Well, you know, it wouldn't hurt to put it in there. My thinking was, is if somebody other than us looks at these minutes, which I don't think very many people do, they might wonder, well, why did you guys put it on hold? What was the reason? So I, yeah, let's put it in. Okay. Pending outcome of the union of the negotiations. Year. Yep. Thank you. Yep. And then do we want to say then parenthetically, which are still not complete? Um, I don't think we need to state it there because when we were talking about it, they aren't complete and they still aren't. And I think you Rose, you're on mute. Rose, union, you're on your mute. Union should be capitalized. In in my view, I think that we should state that they're still not complete. The union. So, or we could just say which are ongoing. Yeah, yeah, which are ongoing. Yeah. Yep. Did you hear me say the font is different? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. Okay. Oh, the font is different. <laughs> but you Thanks, can fix Rose. it later. <laughs> Thank you, Rose. <laughs> Good thing David's not here to get that into the talk of the town. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh. right. Yeah. You're right. I guess I didn't think it was that bad, Rose, that talk of the town thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he just poked fun at me terrible. And I don't like that. I'm just a poor sport. Oh. You know, plus he spelled my name wrong. The, well, that, the, yeah. that I could, well, that's not okay. Yeah. We still right. have you, Rose. Yeah. <laughs> You're still our Rose. Oh, thanks. Okay. I think we're about done. All right. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve the minutes as reviewed with edits? So move. Is there a second? Second. All right, ready to vote. Rose? Aye. I'm an aye. Sharon? Aye. Cliff? Aye. All right, I'm gonna get Alfred on the phone. Did anybody catch the last name of the person named Pat who was on the call earlier? I could not identify who it was. Uh, tried several different ways, text and voice prompt and whatnot. Uh, their audio was breaking up, so no. You want to sign back? It might have been Pat okay. Fennings. Thanks. It might have been Pat Fennings. Okay. All right. But we can't. Was that before sure. I even? Was that before I came back at the very beginning? Yeah. Yeah. Would you um, like? Would you like? So, did or, or delete that name from the list of attendees. Was he ever really there, Cliff? I could oh, never yeah. tell. Yeah, he was there. I don't know if they were actively listening. At one point, they, they checked out of the meeting. So huh. I think they were there listening, but I don't know if I there think was a we'll specific just have to, issue. Um, can we just put in Pat question mark? Yeah. Or just Pat, so we in parentheses, unknown last name or last name unknown. Something. Yeah, just so we know somebody else was actually there. Okay. All right, Alfred's going to be check signing back in. So everybody, go get you, fill up your water glass while we're waiting for Alfred. Yep, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Good night, Katie. Good night, Katie. Right. Thank you. Well, so yeah, thank you, Katie. Did we go into executive session or not yet? Not yet. We'll did wait for Alfred to cut, sign on. Okay.
helping arm. I'm going to bring him in. Okay, great. And we got to. Um, I'm going to go into executive that. session. Hey, Alfie, we're just regrouping, then we'll go into executive session here in a minute. Okay. So we're supposed to get just still some cold weather, huh, Alfred? Yeah. Not much Not much snow, thank goodness. Yeah, no, there's a couple inches coming tomorrow night, I guess, but nothing major. I was out walking the dogs, and did, Roger had David out for a walk yesterday, when, yesterday afternoon, and the sand truck came by. Yeah. I don't, know, I don't know who was driving it, but uh, I think it must have been Jacob. Ah, okay. He's on that route now. Oh, okay. No, All problem. right. Is it... so must have been sad to see Paul's last day. Yeah, it sure was. Yeah, he'll be missed very much. Yeah. I liked him. He was a hard worker. Yeah. everybody back i'm here okay can you want to make a motion rose to go into executive session sure i make a motion we go into executive session uh with the road commissioner alfred larrabee to discuss personnel matters at 8 47 p.m all right i'll second that ready to vote rose Aye. Cliff? Aye. I'm an aye. Is Sharon, are you there? Well, we've got three. Oh, there, oh, she, there is. she is. Oh, okay. We're just voting to go into executive session, Sharon. Do you want to vote? She didn't hear you. Oh, I think there. you asked me if I want to vote to go into executive session. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you.